over my entire plant collection as of right now. Is it an obsession? Just a little bit, but at the same time you can't say no to any of these because they are beautiful plants that I've tried to take care of dearly. <laughs> I know I have taken the name uh, Plant Amma, but by no means am I a plant expert, so I just want to give you that as a heads up. In terms of maintaining plants or learning about plants, I think the app picture this is really, really great. It can detect uh, what type of plant you have, how to take care of it based off of AI technology, which is really cool. Keep in mind though that it's not 100% accurate. There are just some plants that I may identify that are not the exact name, so I apologize in advance. We'll also talk about where I've purchased pots for these plants, uh, how I take care of these plants, and then the final thing is where to purchase plants uh, similar to these in Toronto. So let's start off, start off with the gigantic one behind me. This is a umbrella tree. As you can see, it's quite large in size. Um, I wanted a plant that was, you know, similar to a birds of paradise or fiddle leaf. But, you know, when my sister and I were looking for a gigantic plant, this one caught our eye. It's a really beautiful plant. I'm glad we purchased it. I think we purchased it in March. In terms of the diameter, it is a bit bigger than the original pot that I bought it for. So what I decided to do was take some gold tape and then wrap it around so it looks intentional and you'll come to realize that some of the plants that you buy, even though you measure out the diameter, you have to think about the slant or if it's going straight down. If it happens to go like this, it might be better to go two inches bigger for your pot. So just a little tip that I've learned um, and I don't really want to return the pot because I think it's beautiful. And he here we have my lovely Strowman. I, I love this plant. I don't know if you guys can see how beautiful this plant truly is. It has specks of pink, fuchsia, light green, dark green, and this beige color. And I just, I can't, I don't know what it is about Stromans. They are just beautiful plants. And you can find this very easily in Toronto. So get your hands on a Stromant. I think it is the best plant you can possibly buy. Now I'm gonna go over all the, all the plants that are in my Umbra wall hanger so there are three plants that i'll be talking about the first is this little guy i believe don't quote me on this it, it may be the song of india it just says tropical on the card i think we've had it since december january um it says it should be in medium diffuse light keep soil evenly moist and fertilize once a month we haven't fertilized it yet which is kind of bad but she's in good shape i love her we love her we love her. The sec second is a peace lily. As you can see, I still have the price tag on it. There were lilies attached to this and they all died, but the leaves on this plant don't give up on me. The third one is a snake plant. Snake plants, I think a lot of people know about them and there's various types of snake plants. This one only had one originally and then a baby snake grew. So I do have to repot this because as you can see, there is a little dent to the pot. Uh, I have a good relationship with snake plants and I plan to buy more and yeah, just very beautiful. So when we were going through the pandemic, I just wanted to buy new plants, but the only place that was open at the time was Walmart. So what I ended up buying was a dumb cane. This is what it looks like. This plant, it is dying and I just keep cutting off the leaves, but overall it's still a gorgeous plant. It's just, I don't think this will continue to survive for the next two months, which is unfortunate, but it's still a nice plant. I just had no luck with it. The pot is from H&M Home, and I don't know if I mentioned the umbrella trees pot is also from H&M Home. I've mentioned this before in my home tour, and this is a European fan palm that my best friend Shara bought for me. I think I've kept it for over two to three years now. It lived the longest. I really think this is easy to maintain. As you can see, I've kept it for quite a while. It will die here and there, but in terms of it growing back, I've had no issues. Um, I have not refertilized this and I probably should. You can buy these from Ikea and the pot is also from Ikea, I believe. So yeah, I just, I have no complaints about this plant because she's still thriving. 
she's still driving. Okay, this one, Akash, I don't know how you did it. I don't know how you maintain succulents because as you can see, I have a very, very hard time maintaining succulents. I don't know why. They either go haywire like this guy over here or they just start to die like this one over here. Um, clearly they're not evened out. Maybe that's one reason as into why they're not thriving the way they should. But in terms of succulents, me and succulents just don't go hand in hand. They always die eventually. Um, but that being said, I really appreciate the time he has taken to create this. I just wanted you to see this lovely guy. I, I also want to talk about a plant that I had and is dying, but I want to revive it. And it is this paddle plant. Again, I think it is under the succulent family, which is probably why I have a hard time. As you can see, the leaves are kind of like getting crisp at the end. Don't really know the reason why definitely check on picture this but it's a beautiful plant I will try to revive it to the best of my ability if you have any tips or tricks on how to kind of keep this plant going please let me know we are gonna go over this ladder I know there is quite a lot and I'll go from top to bottom and talk about the pots if I know where they're from I oh the pattern on the leaves of this plant, beautiful, beautiful. This is called a Chinese evergreen. If you look closely, you can see what I mean as into why I love this plant. I bought the pot from uh, Tiny Flower on Bay Street, and this plant is also from there. This plant, I have no other words to describe it aside from beautiful. I just wanted you to see it. Look at it. Look at it! Look at it! Look at it! I want all of you to look at it! Look at it. Okay, I'm done. I'm done with this one. Clavia fam family? I don't know. They are magic of its own. They are gorgeous. I don't know how God has created plants like this, but they ha they just exist. So this is a Clavia fusion white, and there are specks of dark green, light green, and then there's lavender and dark purple, which is what makes this plant beautiful. In terms of the pot, if you look closely, it has this geometric pattern, which I bought from Davenport Garden Center, as well as the plant. So yeah, totally cute. So this plant, I believe I also got from Walmart and it is a rubber plant. It is a very simple plant. I wouldn't say there's too much going on with it, but um, definitely breaks up the greens that I have because as you can see this one's more uh, light and definitely gives a nice contrast to all the plants that I have. Oh, and, and all these white pots are from Amazon and I got it as a pack of six so totally worth it. This is the cutest plant. When I bought it I'm just like this looks like actual string bean. Looks like actual string beans. It is called a happy bean plant um or i'm not going to pronounce the actual name because i think i'm going to butcher it it grows really really fast <laughs> and then in terms of the pots i also got them from amazon from the same company as the white ones and they're more of like a i wouldn't it feels like terracotta but the pattern is more uh, mosaic then comes with this little coaster for it plant I can't say anything else except the fact that it's freaking cute. This one, this one is called a lemon and lime. It is the smallest plant that I have on this ladder and it's the cutest little thing ever. And I wanted to actually point out that this pot is from Dharma. And I'm quite shocked because it's a beautiful pot. It matches the entire theme going on in my ladder and I can't, can't say no to it. It's like this geometric pattern going on and there's only 125. <laughs> I love it so much. Now we are going to the third shelf here. And I have two plants to showcase. The first one is a satin pothos. These are beautiful plants. You see them everywhere. They grow more like in a vine-like shape, as you can see, starting to dangle down. Very similar to the Chinese evergreen up here and in terms of like the pattern on the leaf. I have Kind of potted it with two pots though 
the first one being that white pot that I mentioned from Amazon and then the green pot I got from Winners. The reason why I used two pots is because I wanted to elevate it given the fact that, you know, it kind of cascades this way. So yeah, just a beautiful pot. And I think this green really makes it stand out. And this is a jade, this is a type of jade. And if you've seen other jades, it's like this big bulbous plant. I've actually had one before, but because of how heavy it is, it just, just died. It's still just as cute. Here you go. And finally, we're going to go to the bottom part of my ladder. There's just three plants in that part. So this is a pinwheel plant, very similar to the paddle. Um, I thought this would die on me, but it hasn't. And I'm very happy that it hasn't because one I love dearly. And that's all I can really say about this one. You have done me justice and I'm very proud of you. This plant is not dying, but the edges are not doing justice. And it is a corn plant that I bought from Walmart. There's nothing, like there's nothing bad about the plant. It's just not, I've had better. As you can see, I have better. I just think I could have purchased a nicer plant with head forest, that's all. Finally, uh, the last plant I actually got yesterday, I don't know why it's at the bottom, it technically should be at the top just because of how beautiful the foliage is, but it is also another clavia, I think clavia or nada, it's, I'm not gonna butcher the name again, but can we just talk about how, I'm shaking a lot, I'm sorry, but how beautiful this plant is, just, in its simplicity with the pink lines just kind of reminds me of this stroman and i what else is there to say aside from the fact that all these plants are beautiful really you're just seeing the types of plants that you can potentially buy but what i'm going to say about each of these plants is that they're all beautiful <laughs> as mentioned in term in terms of maintenance i do water them once a week and then spritz them every other two days and then this is the only plant where i water it every two weeks what I use to water it with is this guy. Just like lovely spritzer. Water would be nice. That's basically all I do every morning. Do that to all these plants. And then what I do every three months is use plant food spikes. People have mixed feelings about this. These are from Miracle Grow. You can get them from Amazon or you can get them from Canadian Tire. A lot of places sell them. And I just spike the little hole using this, and then I place the little stick in there. And then in terms of where you can purchase plants in Toronto, Davenport Garden Center has really nice exotic plants. Just be mindful that you are going to get a small plant for the price that you pay. So the Calathea was a four inch and that was like $20, same with the one that's on the bottom. It's not expensive, it's not really a bad thing given the fact of how different it is. Another place that I really, really love is Tiny Flower on Bay Street. I think it's the most affordable place I've been to. The owner is super friendly. You should check out her Instagram. Uh, I think there's a lot of great variety in that store too. A lot of nice indoor plants that you can buy from, and I'm planning to buy a monstera from her and a fiddle, uh, fiddle leaf. And then another place that I want to talk about is Queen's Fruit Market and Plants, which is along uh, Queen and Portland. I think the most variety for a store that's like half convenience store, half planned market. <laughs> she even has like an outdoor market in the back of her store. So her variety is crazy. She even has herbs. She carries uh, bouquets of plants, so like tulips. I don't think she has roses. She has a crap ton of succulents. And uh, yeah, I think those are my top three. And then in terms of like hidden gems, you would have to go to convenience stores that carry plants. A lot of Asian convenience stores are like half uh, convenience store, half plant or like floral shop. Yeah, when it comes to finding plants within Toronto, downtown Toronto, you're not gonna come into like a pickle of not finding places because there's a lot. It's just finding the right ones that have a decent price, a good variety and even their customer service. I hope you guys enjoy my plant collection. This by no means is not a video in terms of how to take care of plants because like I said, I'm not a plant expert. I'm a plant admirer, a plant lover. So 
if you don't like the generic plants these are just some options um, as I mentioned the Calathea family is a very very exotic and unique plant family Stromance are just I can't say anything bad about them and things like an umbrella tree are quite different but they stand out this is going to be a lengthy video now that I'm realizing it and I hope you have taken something out of this I really really do